Good morning. My name is Kamalindran, and today I'm going to give a presentation. My presentation topic is law reform on overriding interest. The, the, the history of Land Registration Act 1925 was that after the Land Registry Act 1862 and further attempts in 1875 and 1897 failed as they either tried to register everything or largely relied on voluntary registration. The 1925 Act was drafted to ensure a more complete but progressive system. There still exist two types of land today. The Land Registration Act 1925 was intended to modernize the law with regards to both unregistered Land Charges Act 1925, now known as Land Charges Act 1972, as well as Registered Land and Simplified Convention. Parties intending to buy and sell property were able to revert to one central land registry to complete ownership of title to property. Before Land Registration Act 1925, the method of land transfer and ownership was complicated, uncertain, and unruly. The foundation of Land Registration Act 1925 was based on three principles. Number one, mirror principle. Number two, curtain principle. Number three, insurance principle. The mirror principle is that the mere principle refers to the idea that due registration of land title must reflect all the important and significant details that a purchaser must know before buying the land. The curtain principle is that purchasers do not need to look beyond the register and are not concerned with trust. The insurance principle is that any flaws in the register leads to payment of compensation to an aggrieved person. Well, there are problems and criticisms in Land Registration Act 1925. The criticism were imposed against Land Registration Act 1925 namely because the creation of overriding interests. They are interests not protected on the land register but nevertheless by any person who acquires an interest in registered land, either on first registration or where there is a registrable disposition of a registered estate that has been completed by registration. Hence, this problem flew in the face of mere principle and had to be resolved. Many registered purchasers still found themselves bound by rights they were not aware of. The Lord High Chancellor said that Land Registration Act 1925 was badly drafted, did not provide a platform for e-convincing and remained complicated. Well, now came in the Land Registration Act 2002. Why the Land Registration Act came in? The, core, the main aim of the Land Registration Act 2002 is to ensure that ownership of land in England and Wales takes the form of title by registration rather than registration of title. This marks a radical departure from century of land law which established possession as the basis of title. The, under the Law Commission report number 271, identified that Land Registration Act 1925 did not achieve the objectives set out in its creation and that there was a need for all overhaul. The main aim was that the mirror principle had to be achieved as perfectly as it was possible so that there would be only one registration system reflecting all rights and interests without having to look outside of the register. 
Professor Martin Dixon said there is a need to revolutionize land registration and realize the aim of electronic conveyancing. Land Registration Act 2002 modifies Land Registration Act 1925 and classifies estates and interests for the purpose of land registration accordingly. Number one, dispositions to be completed by registration through Section 27 of Land Registration Act 2002. Number two, unregistered dispositions which override registered dispositions. This maintains the old overriding interest so that the effect is that a buyer of the land can be bound by an interest not on the register, which is under Schedule 1 for unregistered interest, which override first registration, and Schedule 3 for unregistered interest, which override a registered disposition. Number three, interest to be protected by an entry against the title which they bind previously known as mirror prints mirror interest section 34 notice and section 43 restriction the class interests that have overriding status under land registration act 2002 are more restricted than under land registration act 1925 but include short legal leases less than seven years, certain rights of people in actual occupation and unregistered legal easements. Now the problem with overriding interest is that the main problem with Land Registration Act 2002 has been overriding interest. Law Commission had a choice of abolishing such interest altogether but instead only change the way it is referred to today's interest that override, reduced and restricted its application in practice. Hence, the old case laws and problems still remain as of today. The mirror principle, yet again, is out of sight from the landscape of the United Kingdom land law system. There are still rights that can, that can buy third-party purchases which are not reflected in the land registry system. There are evidence to support that overriding is a problem, which is in the case of Ling Landing Limited and Bastard. In Ling Landing Limited and Bastard, Mrs. Bastard was sectioned under Section 3 of the Mental Health Act 18, 1983. Therefore, she could not live continuously at her house, although she was the registered proprietor. Nevertheless, Ms. Mrs. Bastard visited her house weekly under, under supervision. Unfortunately, a third party fraudulently had Mrs. Bastard's house transferred to him, mortgaged it and defaulted on payments. Subsequently, the bank sought repossession of the house. The issue was whether Mrs. Bastard was entitled to override the bank's interest by virtue of her actual occupation as defined under Schedule 3, Para 2 of Land Registration Act 2002. The Court of Appeal held that the bank's claim failed. The actual occupation was justified as a result of several factors including Mrs. Bastard's regular visits, the third party's knowledge of her mental incapacity and her intention to remain in occupation of her house. This clearly posed a problem with actual occupation as earlier cases clearly state that actual occupation must be given its literal and natural meaning. For instance, in Abbey National Building Society and Ken, 1981, Lord Oliver in the House of Lords provided that the relevant time for determining occupation for the purposes of Section 70 sub 1 sub J was the date of completion 
of the transaction rather than the date of the registration. The preliminary acts of moving in were not sufficient to constitute actual occupation. Hence, actual occupation required some degree of permanence and continuity. By expanding the meaning of occupation from that in previous case in link lending provides further uncertainty with regards overriding interests. It may have been justified in the case itself, but to create more uncertainty in the already correct mirror principle definitely requires the Law Commission to reconsider the inclusion of overriding interest within Land Registration Act 2002. Perhaps the time has come for the elimination of such interest, so as to provide for a more non law on ownership and rights. The reforms of overriding interest. Number one, there is a need to abolish interests that override altogether. There are cracks in the mirror principle, which if not removed, will never be paved way for the revolutionary land law system in the United Kingdom. Number two, electronic convincing must be made a reality. After the abolishing of such interests, when the whole world is moving towards electronic transaction with speed and certainty, the United Kingdom land law system, if not reformed, will cause a barrier in our move towards globalization and technology savvy. Number three, people must be educated about their rights in land so that they are aware of such rights. One of the biggest problems caused initially by the land registration system and the fact that there still exists unregistered land in the United Kingdom is owing to the fact that people do not know what rights they have in land and how they should be protected. Now the conclusion, the conclusion is that the Land Registration Act 2002 did not respond to the shortcomings of Land Registration Act 1925. There is a need for a further reform, a more radical reform, so to speak, so that e-convincing is realized and dealings with property law made simpler. Educating the public at large with workshops highlighting how rights in land can and should be protected is absolutely necessary for the next generation to appreciate the value and interest in land. I'm here ending my presentation. Thank you.